G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. Today what we're taking a look at is the Helicontex Foxhole Bag. Now it's four and a half litres in size, so it's not a big one. And all the information on here is called the Torba Foxhole Foxhole Bag. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that for you. Now all the specs of it uh, features it's a light bag made of 210D ripstop nylon. It can be worn as a waist pack or attached to the Molly Pal system. Retractable carrying system, compression or attaching additional items system. Can be installed vertically or horizontally. The actual buckle, buckles are Rugin buckles, which I like. They've always been good. I've never had any fail on me. Damn good quality. And easy access to the interior thanks to the roll top clasp. So, that's all that bit done. Now, here's the bag. The little foxhole bag. There's a few things I like about it and one really I don't like or maybe two. Now the overall it's a really nice size pack. You can carry it like on your chest if you want to, you can have it hanging on your side, around on your back, it's just the perfect size. You can wear it as a waist bag pack or your fanny pack, whatever you want to call it, on the front or on the back, it's just that size that fits nice and comfortable. Now we've got a strip of molly. One, two, three, four, five, six attachment points coming down there. We've got a bungee which zigzags. Goes probably two thirds of the way Yep, two thirds of the way around. Yeah, it's over halfway, so say two thirds near enough, which is just nice. Uh, my pack set up here with another one on. And this is the Helicon Tex military style poncho. So that fits on that there really nice. We do have the cross over, but I haven't put it through for now. And I've got it on my pack at the moment, on the Bergen. And that hold, oops, excuse me, holds the puncher there nice and tight, especially when using the crossover of the bungee. So even with just the two, and I haven't tightened that up. We have a small line lock here, which is for the bungee, so we'll just give it a pull. And now that's even tighter. So as you're walking, that's not going to be coming off. Now, I've had a play with this, see what fits in here. How easy is it to get in, how comfortable it is to get in there. So, in here, it's a perfect size for the snug pack jungle bag, which goes in here. So, if you don't believe me, Snook pack jungle bag. Well, for those that haven't seen this before, it's a sleeping bag rated down to about seven degrees centigrade with a built in bug net. Very nice. I like this. I use this some, uh, most more than anything else.
Now, I've got the other attached to the top of the Helicontex Bergen at the moment, and I think that's where it's going to live. Now, the quality of this is really nice, all the stitching is good, all that stuff. Can't see any faults with it. So we've got the roll top and it's got a bit of a stiffener in one side and a reinforced material this side. So that just rolls over. And a really good click to hold it in place. That's not gonna come undone with just general use. Virgin book all on the back. I think it's about 20 25 mil strap, which you can adjust to different sizes. At the moment, that's set to where it fits me nice over the shoulder. All we're going to do is pull that through there, then up to the main buckle, give it a tug, and now you can adjust it to cut on your waist. On your back, it sits nice in the arch of my back with a sleeping bag in it. Another thing we've got is where it's attached to the bag. We've got some the actual uh, loop part of hook and loop, your Velcro. And what that's for is the bottom. It's hook and loop on your Velcro, which you can undo. Fold it over a couple of times or just shove it in your choice. If you fold it and put it in there quite flat, it's not going to bother you. We've got the hook on the inside part, and I'll just do it. That's closed off, and we've got the same at the top. There's a the loop. Up and loop all the way across, holding it closed. Tuck that back in there. Close it off with the hook and loop. And all done. Now it's just a, a stuff sack, stroke compression bag. Now the 210 nylon, it doesn't say whether it's waterproof or not. But all the rest of the actual 210D nylon I've got is waterproof-ish. If you leave it there long enough, it will soak through. But for general use, that's going to keep your gear inside fairly dry. Now, as said, majority I like. There's a couple of little bits. I don't like or wish they'd done different. <clears throat> They've got these. Now, I don't like these. I'll come out to the camera closer so you can see them. Now, <laughs> these clips, I don't like these. They're damn awkward, especially if you're trying to get them through your hook and loop or your molly, because you're having to force it down over, and this isn't even on. That's it, force it down. <laughs> and it's not easy, as you can probably tell. And force it in. Again, push it down in the middle here, which helps push it out longer to make it easier to lock. Now imagine trying to do that, <laughs> putting it through these bits here first, these small loops, and then attaching it to the webbing on your pack. Damn awkward. And then when it's on your pack, it flops around. You've got a gap between that webbing and the webbing there. So you so these things that came with it, I will not be using. You can see 
the idea of it is it is a good idea if there's any small in there and like I said that's holding it even closer to your pack and trying to do them up and undo them <coughs> is just a pain <coughs> and you've got the webbing here or your molly parts the webbing which you attach to so you can attach onto your molly that way or you can attach that way using both these and these but like I said let's shove that one through there and I'll show you once that's on there like I said you've got all that play about an inch of play where that pack is just not sitting there and it lifts it away from your pack chance to get something stuck behind it I just personally I just don't like it but actually all the stitching on the webbing is good quality and really nice that's that line lock a bit small but still usable fungi good quality and you can see the way they looped it through coming over here looped it through so you got from here all the way around here I've fitted three of the uh, emergency pouches the ones I carry my little um, compass in there sorry my brain went my compass will fit in there my little emergency fire kit will fit in one of those small pouches and three of them will fit on here nice and comfortable so if you want to carry this as a little emergency pack you can have your three small emergency pouches on there and a jacket in there or your first aid kit or anything or your first aid kit can fit through the bungee and poncho, poncho through the other side and my plan is on one of them I'm going to have my poncho and on the other one I'm going to have my small tarp from Helicon Tex or even one of my DD ones They're all just the small ones for emergencies Now, instead of using these things I think I've shown these before the straps I made they were just off the waist strap for the Sevi pouch and I've got four Sevi pouches on here so I ended up with four straps two for the top and two for the bottom now you saw me get the jungle bag out here it's not the easiest to get in but once you you can just shove it in shove it in and shove it in get your fist in there squash it down and roll it over give it a push down roll it over <coughs> now it's going to be more difficult if you keep it attached to your pouch or your pack but not much more difficult I've, I've actually done it I've tried it all out in the top one here I've got the Sea to Summit regular insulated sleep mat with the um, Snug Pack Special Forces bivy and I've got my pillow in there and I've still got a small amount of room so what that's done now for me is extended the pack with a better quality bag on top and bottom for the, the, the warmer nights but what I can actually fit in here if I wanted to take it down into the colder nights I've got some insulation for my sleeping bag and room to carry now my beanie, my extra boots, gloves, whatever I need to keep even warmer in the colder nights. Now these, they're not perfectly aligned if you're webbing on top of the Bergen, but the webbing on your Bergen is wide enough to allow for that slight V shape to going out of the actual straps so that, that's that's all good and here's the other straps on the bottom and all I'm going to do is the same as the top one I'm going to make sure my opening is on the same side as the top one so then I've got my pack I'm going to put it on this side easier to put things in there close it up easier to get the sleeping bag in here squash it down because I'll be able to push down onto the actual surface the bag's on and get it all in there so now the attachment points 
on the back, we'll go on the bottom of the pack. And the straps will go through the Molly webbing on the bag. Now I'm just going to check which ones I put it through. Yep. Now if you're going to be fitting on the same, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six attachment points with the actual webbing coming down here. I've used the second one and the fifth one and that holds it centered on the pack. Doing this right? No, doing it wrong. Hop over, around, that's right. Doing it the right way the first time, it just didn't look right when it was laying down here. Next one, so that's through the second loop, and this is going through the fifth loop, the second from the end. There's a bit more room in that, that's it. It's got full expansion now on the bag. Get a jungle bag and force it back in. No, I am trying to force it down into all around the edges of any pockets or holes or open spaces in the small bag. Uh, just to try to make it easier for me. Tighten that up. Tighten that up. So there we go. Now we've got the burger. With the extra bag on the bottom. Another one on the top, which means need less stuff to go inside. Better quality bags. Gives me the bungee to add, like I said, I've got my, uh, my poncho. My small top can be added to these now. And once this is fully packed and tight, pulled down, that's going to be nice and secure and it's not going to be wobbling around. Where if you've been installed with these things, even when it's tightened up, this thing was like this. It was just flopping about, there's nothing to hold it in place properly. Good idea, ideal for, where is it? The chest rig to hold your mat pocket inside because it's just two of these, one at each bot on the bottom on the inside. So you can flip over your map, put it back, and get all your EDC stuff there. But no good for putting it onto Molly, I don't personally think so. So that was the Helicon Tex, also known as the Torba Foxhole or the foxhole bag.
perfect size, roughly the same width. Yep, when it's folded down, it's compressed, roughly the same width as the Bergen. Ideal, perfect for the, the actual Bergen pack I've got. Now they're doing three colours, I think it's Shadow Grey, the Coyote which I've got, and they do it in a black. So, and that's on the Helicon Tech's website too. But I got mine from here in Australia, if you want any um, survival supplies Australia. I'll put a link down in the description for you if you want to go down there. I've got a few other links down there for different things. And there's already a link down there for survival supplies for anything else. So there we go, the Foxhole bag from Helicon Tex. 4.5 litre, fits the Snugpack jungle bag in there. The sleeping mat from um, the Seated Summit, the irregular size mummy shape insulated mat. My pillows in there and the Special Forces BB bag. And there's still room in there to squash a little bit more in if need be. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have and you're not already a subscriber, please go down below, click on the subscribe button, click the notification bell next to it and select all and hit the thumbs up button, the like button. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much.